On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, an update on the Fremantle Highway and why are there so many car carrier fires? I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. So that second part was a question I addressed on Freight Waves. I'm going to have that video attached here at the end of this video so you can watch my appearance there. But I want to give you a quick update on Fremantle Highway because some new information has come out. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right. This is a story over in Netherlands Times. Uncertain fate for 3,700 cars on board burnt out Fremantle cargo ship. Now, they interv interviewed Peter uh, Berdowski, the CEO of Bo uh, Bocalis. Uh, that is the company that owns Smith Salvage, and they are doing the salvage of this vessel. While the intention is to remove these vehicles, there's no concrete plan in place yet, Berdowski added. Experts from the involved car manufacturers, this is BMW and Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen, uh, are on their way to assess whether and how the vehicles can be unloaded. Quote, you wouldn't want the cars to catch fire during the moving process and restart the entire misery. Moreover, these cars have charged batteries with high voltage, which are extremely dangerous. So... It appears that about a thousand vehicles below the fire deck on the bottom four decks of this vessel appear to be in good condition and perfectly movable. It goes on here, as of the remaining 2,700 cars on board that are heavily damaged, it's very uncertain if they will be removed from the ship. Berdowski emphasized that it was never stated that this would happen at Amshaven. Amshaven, I think I'm saying it right now. I'm probably not where the Fremantle Highway was towed last week. These are burnt out wrecks located on the upper deck. Some of these decks have fused with the cars. The decks are heavily damaged and difficult to assess. Uh, it goes on that Brodowski mentioned that the cars that cannot be safely removed from the ship will stay on the ship. The ship can stay in Amshaven until October 14th at the latest when it will have to be moved. Whether we're repairing or dismantling the upper decks will have to be removed, Brodowski said. And while doing that, they can also take out the car wrecks. All right. That's the story from NL Times. But I want to go over this story that was sent to me uh, that goes more in depth. So I don't have the full article here for you because it's a subscription, but I had somebody translate it for me and send it to me. And this is just the headline. Disaster ship in Umshaven is a large, unsafe junkyard, but Callis believes it is too risky to remove 2,700 burnt out wrecks from Fremantle Highway. It goes on here, Bocalis estimates that they cannot remove the 2,700 burnt out and often largely melted cars from the Fremantle Highway. That's because it's too dangerous to work on the collapsed decks of the disaster ship moored in Amshaven. All right, so what I have gotten from this article and also from a contact I have at Smith Bocalis is that the upper decks, portions of the upper decks have collapsed. The heat was so intense and those decks are pretty lightweight for carrying cars that they've begun to collapse into themselves. And they've got issues. They've been able to start the engines because the engine plant is safe below the water, below the fire deck. So they got the plant up, it's running. They've been dewatering the ship, pumping out fuel. Uh, they're trying to get the stern ramp down. But the problem they have is going into the decks below the fire decks for fear that those cars and those decks will collapse into the decks where there is not fire damage. And so it appears that they are not going to be able to get the vehicles off this vessel. More than likely, what they're going to have to do is pull this vessel out to a salvage yard to be salvaged, to be scrapped, cut the vessel down deck by deck. And when they get down to those bottom decks, see if they can retrieve those vehicles. I am not sure those vehicles are going to be recoverable at all at this point. They're saying that they don't appear to be heavily damaged, but who would want these things? Water has been sprayed on this vessel. There is no telling. So that's the latest on the Fremantle Highway. We will wait to see what happens next. Now I'll cut you over to my appearance on Freight Waves, where I talked about why there are so many car carrier fires. Say, as I've seen Isaiah drive his car, would not trust him behind the wheel. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Thanks for that, Isaiah. We'll talk to you coming up in just a little bit. Right now, we're going to welcome on Salmer Cagliano joining us to talk a little bit about the recent trends of a lot of fires going on on the ship space. Sal, thanks for being here this morning. What's happening? It seems like we've had this trend of increased incidents on the seas. Uh, we have. We seem to have a batch of new fires going on on board ships. 
And that has been an issue across the board. We saw it with the Grand Costa de Vorio in the port of Newark. That ship was actually carrying used vehicles over to West Africa. And unfortunately, in that case, we had two Newark firefighters who died. But the most interesting one has got to be the Fremantle Highway. If you remember last year, we had a ship called the Felicity Ace that sank off the coast of the Azores. In the case of Fremantle Highway, we actually have a ship very similar to Felicity Ace, except in this case, the ship was actually salvaged and is now sitting pierside in Amschaben in the Netherlands, being assessed by Smit Bocalis. And one of the things we're waiting to see is if they can pinpoint an origin on this fire. There's been a lot of accusations about electrical vehicles being either the cause of the fire or contributing to the spread of these fires. Sal, I, just, I love this fact that we get to combine your two of your great loves, the shipping and, of course, fire, because you work with the local fire department there in, in North Carolina. But with this as well, in terms of the fact that these have happened now kind of a little bit more frequently, unfortunately, than normal, uh, is is this scary that, that now we're getting, uh, maybe there needs to be a new, not necessarily a new regulation, but maybe protocols that weren't necessarily followed that, that led to the starts of these fires? Yeah, I mean, one of the things we've seen is technology in automobile, automobiles and trucks have increased in, uh, tremendously. I mean, we've seen cars undergo big changes in both their construction and what is made out of them. That's not even going into the EV technology. Cars themselves are just using a lot more chemicals and byproducts, and they burn much differently. And remember, on a car carrier, Unlike a parking deck garage, you have vehicles bumper to bumper, door to door, and there is not a lot of space to maneuver around inside these vehicle inside these vehicle uh, car decks. You know, most of these ships are about six to seven hundred feet long. You're thinking about two football fields in length, about a hundred feet wide, and just chocker blocked with these vehicles. And when one vehicle catches fire, whether it be an internal combustion engine or an EV, it's going to spread very rapidly. And with crews of about 25 on board the vessels, it is almost impossible for those crews to get an initial knockdown on the fire, let alone get to the fire. And so what you have to do is be very defensive in how you fight fires. And because of the huge volume, I mean, Roro industry is at its peak right now, where containers were two years ago. We're seeing that right now with the Roros. Cars are moving worldwide. Uh, car carriers load in the United States. They offload in Europe. They load back up in Asia. They, they're moving vehicles all over the place. And this volume of traffic is just going to cause more and more accidents to become prevalent. And unfortunately, because of, again, the nature of an electrical vehicle, which burns about three times hotter than an internal combustion engine and is almost impossible to extinguish when the fires take place on board these vehicle, on board these ships, and you have electrical vehicles, it's almost impossible for the crew or even outside firefighters to put them out. So, Sal, you mentioned that there has to be kind of this defensive approach to attacking fires when it comes on a carrier. Is there anything that ocean carriers or shippers can do on the offensive to kind of re reduce the opportunity for fires to start and spread or, or minimize the impacts that could happen if ones do start? Or is it just a fact of the fact that they're moving electric vehicles and there is that risk there? I, I think a couple of things. Number one, the Grimaldi fire we had up in Newark, the investigation is going to be really interesting. The Coast Guard just removed all the vehicles off there. And Grimaldi has a process in place where you're supposed to disconnect all the batteries for internal combustion engines. They had that in place for quite a long time, yet a fire down in 2020 in Jacksonville, Florida, indicated that they were not following that process. So really making sure that processes are being followed in as many ways as we can to prevent the initial outbreak of the fire are something we need to do. And we need to look at how EVs are loaded and stored on vessels. Right now, they are stored in with normal cars. There's no special consideration for them. And because the way they burn, conventional firefighting techniques, foam or carbon dioxide, doesn't extinguish the fire because you don't need oxygen for these to burn. The lithium ion chemical reaction is what creates that burn. So we may have to look at new loading procedures for vessels. We may have to have an idea about maybe EV only car carriers being used. But right now, there's not enough electric vehicles being shipped around the world to do that. Unfortunately, there's no way to uh, jettison these cars off when they're on board. So we just have to make sure. And a lot of the fires seem to be happening during the loading procedure and immediately after the loading procedure. So we may have to put in some stop gaps in to hold vessels in place a little bit longer to make sure we're not having any fires. 
Sal, as you look at it, this is obviously, you know, again, a recent trend and with EV vehicles kind of unfortunately maybe accelerating, no pun intended, this, uh, this, this, uh, these fires that are happening on these ships. Um, you mentioned the idea of perhaps doing just EV only and then obviously the, the haphazards that can happen there with them burning much harder. What do you think is going to be the, I mean, is this the result perhaps of uh, just uh, temperatures inside the, uh, the, the, the vessel that, that is causing this? And, and, or, or is it maybe just a spark of somewhere that, it, that a battery just all of a sudden goes up in flames? I, I think we're going to really find out with Fremantle Highway. This is going to be the ship that's going to give us the indication because, again, other vehicles and other ship carriers we had, car carriers we had, where we had potential EV fires have basically sunk. Sincerity Ace in the Pacific, Felicity Ace in the Atlantic. We haven't had a chance really to get in there and break down and see what was the point of origin of these vehicle fires. And so is it during the loading procedure? Are these ve vehicles bottoming out on the ramps and damaging their battery pack? which are on the bottom of the vessel, which are heavily protected, and it shouldn't be an issue, yet we this may be the indication. Is there an issue that we can do about draining the batteries down to a core point, but even if you get all the charge off the batteries, you still have the chemical reaction of the batteries. You can't detach the batteries because you need them to dry them on and off. We're at a very interesting kind of inflection point here because right now, even with the fires we've had, it's not profitable to stop doing what we're doing. We haven't reached that point yet. The loss of life in Newark is a big indication that we had two firefighters die. And we've had uh, mariners die on these car fires. And unfortunately, it's going to take deaths, I think, to really see a change take place. This sector is not big enough to draw a lot of attention. But if you look at lithium ion fires on board container ships. We've seen a lot of those. And that's a good indication here that we need to start treating these vehicles in a much different manner than we do just normal internal combustion engine cars. I don't think that there's any debate about that, especially when you look at the fact that EVs catch fire, even on land, for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. Sal, thank you for joining us this morning with this update. Great to talk to you as always, and I'm sure we'll hear from you again soon. It's great to talk to you guys. And if we can hook lacrosse into this, we got the trifecta. Bit, so we'll be all set. <laughs> That's true. Thanks so much for joining us. All right, that's your update on Fremantle Highway and my appearance on Freight Waves this week. If you haven't checked them out, please do so. Go over to FreightWaves.com, check out their channel. They've got great information available to you. They both have their broadcast and journal stories that are on their site, FreightWaves.com. Definitely recommend them. And if you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment and subscribe to What's Going On With Shipping. Hit that bell, hit so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly or yearly subscriber. Until the next video, this is Sal, signing off.